Welcome to the show, Trevino. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, great uh, being on the show. Yeah, I'm really excited about this this um, episode. Only, only because I wanted to, like, I have a passion in sports. I also have a passion for supply chain. And I really think that there is some correlation between the two. I love the mindset of an athlete. I think that the, you learn a lot being an athlete growing up in sports and different things like that. And I just want to sort of talk about that today. Um, I saw your profile on LinkedIn and it was really intriguing because you were talking about um, your passion for sports and then being in supply chain. And I thought you were the ideal person for this. So excited to do this today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I agree. Just like you, I have a tremendous passion for for sport, and it's kind of like the foundation of uh, who I am. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I don't know if the listeners know or, or the viewers know um, about my background a little bit, but I grew up playing softball. So I played fast pitch for a long time, and... Um, I'm, I've been a catcher for 33 years. I still play twice a week. And uh, wearing the catcher gear is like second skin for me. And I learned a lot growing up on the field, right? You learn about teamwork. You learn about collaboration. And there's so much more that we're going to get into in this interview. But I just think that it's really important to talk about. So enough about me. Let's talk about your journey to success. Can you tell us a little bit about your past as an athlete, um, what sport did you play and how did your path lead you to supply chain? Okay. So, um, I was, uh, in the sport of, uh, of athletics for also known as a uh, track and field. Nice. I was on the Canada's national national team for approximately 10 years. Um, and in 2000, I made the decision to, that it was time to, to pack it in. Um, at the time when I did, um, had no idea what I was going to, what I was going to do next, but you know, that's the one thing that, uh, the DNA inside of an athlete, we just figure it out. Just yes, we do. Whatever is next, we're just gonna, we're going to jump into it and we're going to figure it out. Um, but behind every successful athlete or every successful person, there's always, um, you know, friends, volunteer support group that that's there. And I think it was at the 1994 or the 1994, I think it was, um, uh, Commonwealth Games uh, that was in Victoria. Uh, there was a lady that was a that was a volunteer, and she was, you know, this person lives and breathe and have a passion for for sport. And um, she became a friend. And when I told her that I was getting ready to retire in 2000, she said, hey, why don't you um, come and work with me? At the time, she was working for, for Sears. And she knew I had, and she was working in marketing. I had no idea, no experience in marketing. But she was one of those people that would take a bet, bet on a, an athlete at any given time. And so she said, hey, I think you... I think you'd be able to figure it out and do it. And so I went, I joined her, I got the position working in, in marketing, worked with her. And then 19 years later, I'm still in, in retail. Nice, nice. And how did it lead you? Because you, you spent a little bit of time in supply chain. Yeah. So how did well, you end up in supply chain? Well, I worked in marketing, uh, marketing to start. I uh, did a couple of roles there and then in advertising. But again, like an athlete, you always want to fine tune and figure out uh, yeah. what make things work and how can I do better and what else can I achieve? So uh, I asked to go into the stores and work in operations because I really wanted to understand how the, the customer, um, how, the, how, how to work with the customer, what the customer was thinking, what could we do better for, for the customer. Right. So I went into operations and I ran stores for a while. Um, and then got recruited, went over to another big retailer, um, and then worked there for a number of years and said, Hey, you know, I did the operations side, I did the marketing side. 
how do these things uh, actually get to the store? So an opportunity came up in supply chain. And um, again, just didn't know anything about it, but I figured I was going to learn. So I tried it. And then eight years later, I'm still in supply chain. That's great. And it's, you know, it's kind of the mindset of an athlete, right? You sort of jump in with both feet and you figure it out. You work really hard. Yeah. And you find out what, what parts of it that you enjoy. And I really like that. And I, I kind of want to ask you, you know, what skills and disciplines did you learn from being an athlete? And how did that translate into some of the roles or maybe even the decision making that you took to go into the different roles? I think that's the question that comes up quite often. And, and people ask that question, like I said, every time. Like, yeah. What's this? But, you know, I think for any job that you do, there are those... Um, fundamental and certain level of expertise that you that you need um, and, and and that usually comes from either your work experience working on the job it usually comes from certain training or whether uh, school but I think once you strip those away those are the the, the, the the tangible things that you acquire over time right the intangible things that that make up the DNA of an athlete um, that are the things that are just innately there as an athlete which are you know like you don't have to teach an athlete to be motivated right they live their whole life being uh, motivated um yeah. or being a team player it's such a natural thing that you know mm. that you are a team player you can't win without being a, a, a team player and you know what taking that last shot that final piece is just all about that whole leadership you have to problem solve, um, uh, taking that urgency, high energy, all of those things that are the things that makes a champion is really there. Mm -hmm. And you know, being adaptable, those are all things that you just, that are just there in an athlete. And it, it what makes us so fascinated by, by athletes and, and by sports, like it, the Raptors just won. Yeah. You know, people talk about it took 24 years to happen. Well, I argue that because I'm like, when was the last time? It's more than 24 years. Mm -hmm. What motivated a country, the city, to do what just happened in Toronto for that parade other than sport? You know, yeah, take it, take it further back. Take it further back than the 24 years it took the Raptors to win. When was the last, what else could motivate people like that? Mm -hmm. Were you at the parade? I was at the parade. <laughs> yeah, so was I. I took my son, I took my son there because I, I wanted him to see it. We went, um, we went down early and we started at the gate. And oh, so nice. We to see everything. And so we were back by like two o'clock to watch the, you know, them go on. The rest of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, what I did too. I, I think that's the reason why we're so fascinated by by sports um mm -hmm. and the the people who make sports what it is or the athletes within the sport yeah 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 and they took literally going like just staying on the path of the raptors they did that within a year right they were yeah. they'd never played together before yeah and they did it within a year so it also really inspires and it shows what is possible yeah, and it's well, not just in sport. Like, it relates to so many different parts of business. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I think that's the thing. If you were to ask anyone, and, and yes, there's a part of it of how we promote it or whatever, but ask who is the, the top 10 executives in Canada. Right. Other than the people working for those companies, most people don't really. But yeah. ask them who the top you know, three players or top four players of the Raptors are or the Leafs, yeah. they, everyone's going to know. And, and I think that's the piece. It's something that it's just not everybody can, can do it. Yeah. And you mentioned, relate to. you mentioned a couple of key things. You talked about adaptability and yeah. you talked about problem solving. Yeah. So supply chain is all about problem solving. And so I think we can definitely see the correlation between mm -hmm. that as an athlete and that in supply chain. Yeah. But I think the adaptability component is also really key. I mean, the life of an athlete is like a roller coaster, right? You can be on a high one day, low another. You can get an injury and have to adapt from there, potentially go from one sport to another, 
right? Yeah. Because of an injury or because of something that's happened. And so I think that adaptability component is huge, not only on the sports side, not only on the athletic side, but also in the business world. And, you know, you talked about that woman taking a chance on you. And that's one of the reasons why I want to do this interview and I want to do this episode is because there needs to be more people like that. You yeah. know, an athlete chases their dreams and, you know, at some point they do need to retire from that and they need to have a life after that. And I think that it's really important for the business world to take note, right? Yeah. Because of the mindset, because what they can bring to the table. Exactly. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, I, I, I think that's the... You know, when you have, I, I always like to say that they're an athlete going into business is like buying a product that all the parts are in the box. It's an unassembled uh, part uh, product, but it has everything there. And I think that whole piece about just taking that chance is the person that's willing to, to mentor and work with an athlete. When you're done, you end up with a champion. And I think that's the, the whole piece. And I, I think there are people who get it and there are people who don't. And, and not everyone's going to get it because I, I'm not, I'm an athlete. I've always been an athlete. I'm passionate about sport, but there's other things. Um, you know, my whole family, they're, they're musicians. Um, and I think it takes the same level of dedication and commitment. Uh, my sister is an artist and she's, um, you know, very passionate about her work. And I think she comes with that same mindset, um, just in a different, different piece. So Absolutely. I, I find it there, but it, it takes that person that's willing to, to work with and doing the assembly to, to, to get that, that masterpiece out of it. Yeah. And I think it also takes a certain type of business leader too, right? Because depending on the uh, timing in the athlete's life that you're going to take them on and, and coach them on the business side of thing to really figure out what they want to do with the rest of their lives once they do retire. Um, it takes a certain level of commitment, right? Because if they're going to work with you and chase their dream at the same time, there is going to have to be a little bit of flexibility because they're going to have to be gone for training or different things like that. And I think, but I think in today's world with things being remote and flexible schedules and things like that, I think we are more poised to be able to support athletes and bring them into the business world than we ever have been before. You know what? Again, I don't want to keep jumping on the bandwagon of, uh, <laughs> of, of the Raptors, but you can, you can relate, you can relate it the same, the same way. Um, when you think about it, it's so easy to go out and buy a team. Because right. you can go out and buy athletes, just buy the top athletes. Yeah. Um, it, but you have to buy that, that, that right athlete. And this is all about coaching. You can be the coach that just go out and acquire five great talents and try to put them together. And it doesn't always work, Yeah. you know, or you can develop teams that can win championships. And that's what the, yes, they still needed the piece of, of bringing in a, a great athlete, but the majority of those other athletes on, on the Raptors team were mm -hmm. athletes that got developed. And I think it's the same thing in business. You can go out and you can just continue to buy talent. And a lot of times those talents that you buy are not committed to, to stay in. So they may be one and done Yeah. Um, because they know they're great. But that person or that athlete that you bring in and you develop, then they have more loyalty and commitment to, 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 to stay and continue to deliver for you over and over again. So it's just, it, I'm not saying one is better than the other. But it yeah. becomes a it becomes a preference preference of what you want and what yeah. you want. Yeah, and you make a good point because like we're always talking in supply chain about a talent shortage. We have yeah. a talent shortage. We have a talent shortage. And my mindset is, you know, you can't teach mindset. You can't teach motivation really. If you're better off if they have that going in and teaching the skill and I also think that, you know, it's about that development piece, right? Yeah. Because an athlete, they've been so focused on their dream and what they're trying to achieve and that kind of thing. They haven't really looked to see what other passions that they have. What else is out there on the business side of things that maybe they would like to do? 
So even bringing them in and showing them, you know, the different components of a business and things that they can get involved in, you've got the mindset from the get go. Let's just teach that skill. Let's figure out where they fit in. Right. And it's, it's, it's about sort of, you know, getting out of the box, you know, let's, let's change the mindset around talent shortage. There's a lot of really great people out there and maybe they're just not in the right positions or we haven't been able to teach the skills. Well, you know what? I, I would say, what was it? Probably 11 years after I retired, I ended up in supply chain. Right. And people often ask me sometimes, they go like, what are the transferable skills from your sport in that you would bring in supply chain? And I'm going like, that is such an easy one. Because yeah. for me, when you think about it, uh, I spe- spent a number of my years in, as an athlete running the 4x100, which is the, the relay. The whole premise of the 4x1 is to you know, efficiently transfer a baton from one athlete to the next athlete right. around the track to be as um to successfully and when you do it you end up with a masterpiece and you usually win well when you think about supply chain the end-to-end supply chain is really transferring boxes from or product from you know from manufacturing right to the customer as efficiently um as possible and as fast as you can and that's the world we live in everybody right now is trying to solve how can we get products fast and efficiently from manufacturer to our customers? Is that not a relay? Yeah. I love how you really put it into context, right? Because some people look at supply chain and they get overwhelmed and they're like, oh my God, it's such a big word. And what does that really mean? And you're able to put it into everyday examples that people can resonate with, people can you know, relate to. Yeah. It's, um, that's it. it. You know, I had a great coach that used to say to me, you know, running is putting one foot in front of the other. It is that simple. It's not hard. And I think supply chain is moving a box, mm-hmm. but I will tell you this. It takes a lot of effort. Yes. It takes a lot of planning, um, to do it and do it efficiently for it to work properly. So yeah. it's a simple task made complicated by the effort that needs to be put in it to to make it done right yeah and, and the repetition so you start yeah, with trial yeah. and error and yeah. then you've got the repetition i think they said about wayne gretzky didn't he go out on the ice over and over day in day out hours upon hours you know to really perfect perfect his skills to become you know one of the champions of hockey yeah and i and i, and I think that's exactly it in in, in supply chain you know like there is yeah. There's different companies working on different ways on how to move a box. And it is repetition, is how by repeatedly do it and trying to find unique ways mm-hmm. to make it more efficient, to make it work better, um, that's how you're going to get better at it. Yeah. But it, 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 at the end of the day, it isn't rocket science, no. <laughs> but it does take effort. It does. Yeah. And to beat out the competition too, right? Exactly. How how do we beat out that competition? How do we beat out the guy beside us that's running, what is it, like less than a tenth of a second (laughs) behind us, right? If we want to beat him? When you make what the, as an athlete, when you make things too complicated and too much analysis and everybody gets too smart and everybody works in silos and do their own thing, it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Um, in supply chain, when everybody works independently and you make it way too complicated, <laughs> it's a disaster. So then let me ask you, do you think we're using too much data and t- in both supply chain and the athletic world? I don't think we're, I don't think we're using too much data. Yeah. Um, I think data is, is always always good and it's important to evolve but keep Um, it simple but i think you still have to find a way to keep it simple Mm -hmm. Uh, i remember there was a time where in a role that i was and it was um delivering you know like i was managing the distribution of um of flyers um and so 
you know, you'd spend millions of dollars on building flyers, on the marketing, on the positioning of the front page and all of this. And then, you know what, you would give a 10 year old two cents a paper to deliver it. Right. And they dump it in the, uh, in the garbage. <laughs> and didn't deliver it door to door or they threw it in the at the wrong doorstep and it's going like okay it doesn't matter how great of a plan you have if the no. final delivery it was garbage then you just wasted a whole bunch of money <laughs> well and that is so much truer today with all customer expectation yeah. and customer experience and all that kind of stuff with last mile and there's a, there's even another term that they've come up with that I can't I can't remember what it is right now but so one of my passions um, again is you know athletes and sports and getting them into the business world and it's it's something of my grandiose vision for what I'm building right now is to be able to work with them and and give them a place to find the skills find the things that they're looking to do um, in their life during the time that they're looking to, to chase their dream and also after. Um, and I'm not going to get into too, too many details, but let me ask you, how do you think that we can support athletes to reach their dreams on the field and in their work life? Um, I think it, 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 it becomes very, it becomes very natural. I think for, for athletes, um, in their sport, in, in in um because it's something that they know something that they've been training and something that they've uh they've done so the confidence is naturally there i think when what you find is the trans transferring those that confidence into business it's going into a world of the unknown right so I, I think just like what you do for your athletic um your, your athletic career is you really have to build a plan. Um, and so, and when you build that plan, you have to share it with people that care and yeah. people that are going to support you. And I think that's the biggest thing. There are people out there that get it and there's lots that don't get it. Don't waste your time trying to convince someone who doesn't get it to get it because they probably never will. Right. But we live in a global world now that, you know what, if you, if WestJet is giving you the run, run around, take Air Canada. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, I, and I think that's, you have to, so I think as an athlete, you have to be patient. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be confident and you have to ha find the right support system, the right coach that is going to be your pro professional coach that's going to help to mold you and give you this, the opportunity that you need to, to show your success. And what about um, the advice to athletes um, to, while they're chasing their dream, maybe to try different things, um, to see where their passions lie, so that they have an idea later on in the future of what they want to get into. Would that be some advice that you would give to, to athletes while they're, you know, chasing their dream and they're so focused on that, but at the same time, in my mind, I almost think like they, they need to take some, um, some, not risks, but they need to take some chances and just try different things professionally just to see where, where that lands for them because that'll give them an edge as they go, go into retirement. Well, I think one of the things for me is that life is, and everyone says it, life is a journey. Uh, yes. And I think as athletes, what we're guilty of is that level of focus that we have is part of what makes us great, makes us do great things, make us successful. Um, but at the same time, it can be a blind spot in the fact that on, in this journey to be great, you don't explore and you don't look at other things. Okay. And I think it's the, the one advice, enjoy the journey, but be open and be open-minded and see what else is on the journey. It's, it's something as simple as, you know, you will meet people along the way that you're going like, well, I have no use for you because you can't help me to get to the world championship or you can't help me to win my next thing. But that person may be the person that you have to call on 
um, two on. years down down the road. Yeah. Or you know that that profession is something that I never even thought of. But you know what? How could I explore it more? Um, you know, something as simple as I'm looking for sponsorship, and there was a company, and you go, okay, you know what? And they deny you of a sponsorship, and you go like, okay, forget it. They suck. Well, how do you know that's not an industry that you would want to work in after? Right. So it may be not monetary or something that you're looking for now, but is it a relationship that you can build on that later on you can call on because it's something that you're going to be interested in? Absolutely. Do athletes, um, while they're chasing that dream, do they, I'm guessing that they work, right? There's, there's got to be some sort of um, professional I, I, or how does that I, work? I think in this day and age, I think it depends on the goal you're going after. I okay. think um, there are more opportunities for athletes not to work now. Okay. Um, and it depends on where you are in your, in your athletic journey. Um, mm -hmm. So I think there are some people that can afford not to work, but then there are people that, that can afford to work. And part of like a sponsorship or part of the support that they get is from a company that they're working for that allows them to do that. Right. And I think, those are some of the, the athletes that, that are more successful. I believe that your journey should not be exclusive of just, or just be one dimensional. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to work any place um, now that's going to prevent me from being a good father right. or prevent me from still being an athlete. Um, and, and so, so to be able to bring the other aspects of, of my life together, um, that said, I don't want to just be same thing when I was an athlete, I just don't want to be an athlete that just focus and don't care about anything else right. and not see the other things that are happening in life around me, um, not, not be aware of the changes that's happening. So I think it, athletes have to take the accountability and take that ownership to, see how the world has evolved the world that you're going to have to live in after you when you no longer can be that athlete right and then any advice to an employer that um hires maybe a former athlete on you know maybe um keeping them challenged or you know wh what does that look like I think it's, it's, it, for me, it's just, um, the only advice I'd give is just, just be open-minded. Um, Flexible. And it's, it's kind of like that coaching. You've, you've heard people talk about where they're going like, this person is just raw talent. Right. Um, you know, and man, if you get some coaching and some guidance, you're going to be great. Um, and, and so I think it's the same thing for, for, um, for employers uh, to, to understand that, look, you know, you may not see all the pieces that you're looking for right now, but you know, a few months of investing some time or a year or a couple of years of investing some time, boy, are you going to end up with something that you're, you know, that is going to move your organization into a different place and it can be contagious. Um, again, it's my last Raptors comment. I promise you. <laughs> Um, but, but, but you see, everyone will talk about Kawhi Leonard and, and how great he was for the team. When I look at it from an athletic perspective, I don't think it was his talent that made the biggest difference of change in the Raptors. It was his attitude. Right. He brought a winning mentality to that team that made them all get better. He just mm -hmm. didn't, because you can't do it on your own. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes uh, organizations, companies underestimate what having a winner on their team means for their entire team, not just, you know, right. what they're going to produce by themselves. And what they said about Kawhi was he and what he thanked the, the team for was just to sort of let him do what he does best. Exactly. Right. And I think that there's really something to learn there from a leadership perspective, from an employer perspective, from a business perspective, is that, you know, it's not about the micromanaging. It's about being flexible and allowing somebody to do what they do, how they do it best. It, and you, not putting your style on them 
which will not make them the winner in the end. A lot of leaders are eight type personalities mm-hmm. and like to build molds. You know, right. I have a mold, you need to fit in it, you need to fit in fit in this box. And I understand it. But we're we're living in a world that is moving so fast and yeah. changing so quickly. The only way to be successful is to be open-minded enough to say, hey, um, let people be themselves mm-hmm. and you'd be amazed on where they can, they can take you on that journey. Your job is to, to coach and provide guidance. And that's what a good leader does. It's not your job coach. is to make people think like you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, I have loved this conversation. I think that and I hope that a lot of people are going to, you know, take a lot away from this. So what, let's talk about your future. What's next for Trevino? What does that look like? What's next for me is always going to be the same thing. If you ask me this question 10 years ago, if you ask me this question 10 years from now, it's going to be the same thing. And that is um, continue to develop, continue to learn, continue to grow my skills, um, open as many doors as I can for you know, those around me, um, be a coach and a mentor and face the world with a smile. Um, I think the world needs more smiling and it needs more good people. And I think, you know what, good or bad, whatever is in front of me, I'm going to approach it and take it with a smile and see where it leads me. I love that. Well, it is my dream to build a company and support athletes and support them on their journey in a flexible environment while helping them to find a place in their workforce. Athletes are some of the most successful on and off the field. And as you can see from my conversation with Trevino, they are looking to work in dynamic industries like supply chain. So for more information about this episode, this is gonna be up on YouTube. So I'm gonna be sharing it all over the place. I just wanna thank you Trevino for coming on the show, sharing your, your story and showcasing your thoughts and insights on you know, athletes, the sports world and how it correlates to business and supply chain. Okay, thank you, Sarah, it was a pleasure.